How was it? The ultimate hospitality, straight from me. With a contoured face, I looked down on my husband and his affair partner, seizing the perfect moment to deliver my well-rehearsed line. I am Madeline. I am 28 years old. I have been married to John, who is 30 years old, for two years now. I finally conceived my long-awaited child, and I am in the midst of a blissful maternity life. Currently, I am three months pregnant, and staying at my parents' house, separated from my husband. Originally, when I was in the last months of pregnancy, I was supposed to go back to my parents' house for home birth. Since you are a first-time mother, if something happens while you are alone at home, I might not be able to rush home immediately because of work commitment. I would feel safer if you stayed at home with your parents. Upon hearing these words from my husband, I decided to return to my parents' house a bit earlier than planned. I don't really worry because my prenatal checkups have always been smooth sailing. But if it brings peace of mind to my husband, at that time, I had no idea that my husband was doing such things behind my back. Around the time I entered the eighth month of pregnancy, I needed something that I had left at home. So I drove my car back to the house. It happened to be a Saturday, and my husband was supposed to be home on his day off. Wanted to surprise him. I intentionally didn't inform him in advance. I arrived at the house and quietly opened the door. Welcome home. How was your day at work? I energetically entered the living room, saying my usual greeting, but there was no one there. It was already past twelve o'clock, so normally he would be awake, and the curtains were also open. It didn't seem like he had stayed out overnight. I wondered if he had gone back to sleep for a bit. I peeked into the bedroom, but sure enough, my husband was nowhere to be found. It seemed like he had gone out. Well, it's a day off, so these things happen, right? Feeling a bit disappointed that my surprise failed, I shrugged it off, and only took what I needed before leaving the house. That night, when I called my husband, in between updates and chit chat, by the way, were you somewhere today? I casually asked, not thinking much of it. What are you talking about? I didn't go anywhere. Yesterday, I had to work late due to overtime. So I just slept at home. That was my husband's reply. Oh, I see. You had a tough day. Good job. Although he played dumb, I could sense that something wasn't right deep inside. My husband was lying. But why? Why would he need to hide the fact that he went out on a day off? That small suspicion at that time remained like a thorn in me. The following week, I headed home once again. I planned it for the weekday daytime when my husband was not around, and once again, I kept it a secret from him. I told my parents that I was going to retrieve something from home, but the true purpose was to uncover the truth behind my suspicions about my husband. I quietly opened the door and entered the room, but my husband wasn't there. I could freely search the entire house without any hesitation. To cut the chase, there was a harvest, a tremendous harvest, indeed. Evidence of the affair came pouring out in abundance. Among them, the most significant evidence was found on the computer. Perhaps due to the carelessness of assuming, I, his wife, wouldn't be present. He hadn't set the password for the computer. I immediately looked at the data, and there was a folder named Three. It looked suspicious at first glance. When I opened it, it was filled with images of a young woman and my husband smiling together joyously. They had been going out to various places, from trendy cafes to restaurants, with breathtaking night views, even Disneyland. And shockingly, there were pictures of them on a hotel bed. 
checking the data on the photos, I discovered that their dates had started approximately a month before I had planned to return to my parents' house. I proceeded to copy all the images onto an external memory and safely stored it in my bag. I couldn't recognize the face of the woman involved in the affair. First and foremost, I wanted to know who this woman was and where she came from, so I devised a plan. I went to a nearby shopping mall to buy ingredients of dinner and return home, waiting for my husband. Whoa! Huh? When my husband came home, he seemed surprised to find me there. I came here as a surprise to make dinner. I'll take care of everything. So why don't you go take a bath? With that, I swiftly ushered my husband into the bathroom. After confirming the sound of water from the shower, I took out my husband's smartphone from his bag. The lock number hadn't been changed since I accidentally saw it before, so I easily logged in. And there, I discovered emails exchanged frequently between my husband and his affair partner. In those mails, the partner's name was also written as three. Curious. I checked the contents and found a name that seemed to be belong to a woman named Tria. Latin for three is Tria, so it must be related. I took photos of the affair partner's full name, contact information, and any other details I could find on my own phone, but I ran out of time. My husband seemed to have finished his shower and came out. I returned his phone to his bag as if nothing had happened. After that, I had dinner with my husband with an innocent look on my face. Since it's gone late, maybe I should stay overnight. Suddenly, I decided to spend the night. We engaged in casual conversation before going to bed. In the middle of the night, I quietly got up and set up email forwarding on my husband's phone. Now. I would have access to all the exchanges between my husband and his affair partner. Looking down at my peacefully sleeping husband, a triumphant smile crept across my face. The next day, my husband went to work, and I returned to my parents' house. Within that day, I bought a personal laptop for myself. I had a computer at home that my parents were using. But I didn't feel comfortable opening images of my husband's affair, or backing up evidence of the affair. Using the computer I purchased, I researched on the internet and found that I could divorce my husband based on the evidence of the affair I had on hand. Turns out, I can get alimony too. However, I wasn't just thinking about myself anymore. While gathering evidence for a critical moment. I decided to prioritize the birth of my child first. Two months later, I safely gave birth to a baby girl. Although my husband wasn't present at the delivery, he came to visit me and offered kind words. But I knew, I knew that on the night he returned from the hospital visit, he had met with his affair partner, Tria, to avoid stress on my body. I tried my best not to think about my husband until the birth was over. After giving birth and gazing at my daughter's sleeping face, I deeply thought to myself, "It's just not possible. I should get a divorce from my husband. It's absolutely unforgivable that someone could have such a precious and adorable child and still have no intention of stopping their infidelity." However. Just separating from my husband wouldn't satisfy me. I want to make him feel the consequences of his actions. While contemplating such thoughts, and continuing to read the emails forwarded to me daily from my husband, I came up with an idea. I explained the situation to my sister, who lived with our parents, and asked for her cooperation. We waited for that day. It was Friday, 1 p.m. My sister and I were in a parked car near the house, filming a video. She was in charge of the camera, 
and I play the roles of producer and host. Finally, it's time to execute the plan. Let's go to John's place. I hope he'll be happy. Facing my sister's camera, I spoke cheerfully. We paused the filming and moved to the front of the house. Carefully, we quietly unlocked the door to avoid making any noise. We resumed recording the video and silently tiptoed through the hallway until we reached the bedroom. As I listened attentively, I could hear the voices of my husband and his affair partner talking. When I saw my wife the other day, she had gained weight and completely turned into an old lady. I don't need an aging wife. <laughs> You're right. She's finished as a woman. Hey, when will you leave her? I want to be with you as soon as possible. In the next moment, I burst through the bedroom door with a wide smile on my face. Hey, John. And you, right next to him. Welcome to the surprise party. <gasps> Wait. Muddling? Yes, I'm muddling. And the aging wife. Today, we've come to celebrate your birthday, John. I cheerfully made the declaration and looked towards the bed, but I was taken aback. My husband was lying on his back, completely naked, with handcuffs on both wrists. Unfortunately, I recognized these items. When I searched the house in my husband's absence, I had found them hidden in the back of the closet and took photos of evidence. I never expected to encounter them again in this manner. For some reason, the strange situation had me all worked up. Oh, it seems the costume party is already in full swing. I feel underdressed. I didn't bring enough enthusiasm. I playfully joked and made noise with the party cracker in my hand, facing my sister's camera. Happy birthday! My husband, taken aback, muttered quietly. My birthday is next month, though. Oh, right. I got so caught up in planning the surprise celebration that I completely forgot. Seeing me in a super high-spirited state, my husband was at a loss for worse. I couldn't let him think that this was the end of it. With my next move in mind, I took out a container from the cooler bag. I've also prepared a celebratory dish for you. It's something a little out of the ordinary. A luxurious delicacy. Give it a try. I opened the lid of the container and showed it to my husband. What is this? Oh. My husband screamed and stumbled back, hitting his head against the wall. What is it? It's pizza. P pizza? Where? I mean, it's insect pizza. What I showed to my husband was a homemade insect pizza with crickets, mealworms, and beetle lava placed on top of the pizza dough. Do you know about entomophagy? The consumption of insects as food. In fact, insects are being recognized worldwide as the food of the future. That can help solve environmental issues and food crisis. However, my husband absolutely hates insects. He has an ingrained aversion to even looking at or touching them. Of course, I am well aware of this. Don't worry. The ingredients were purchased from a manufacturer online. And they were meant for consumption. Besides, John and Tria, if you were the only two left after humanity demise, you wouldn't survive. Unless you could eat insects, right? You would become like Adam and Eve, wouldn't you? Huh? Why would you say that? The affair partner seemed speechless. Perhaps because I called her name. I also won't expect that I was speechless when I read your emails. No matter how much I, the wife, am in the way. 
if humanity were perish, and only the two of us remained, we could get married, right? I feel the same way. It would be nice to be like Adam and Eve. I can't believe they said such embarrassing things without hesitation. Come on, John, eat it. Just eat it. I won't take no for answer. I approached my husband with a big pizza in hand. Look, even the queen over there. Stop daydreaming and remove the handcuffs. In this situation, there's no way to escape from the affair. Besides, my husband probably already knows that behind my playful demeanor, I'm actually furious. Eventually, my husband seemed to give in. With trembling hands, he picked up the pizza and shoved it into his mouth. <laughs> he cried out in a voice that wouldn't come out, tears streaming down his face. Now, Tria, it's your turn. Tria, with a serious expression and a low voice, extended her hand slowly and ate the pizza with teary eyes. Sitting with their legs folded under them, the queen and her subordinate indulged in the insect pizza. It was quite spectacle. And soon enough, my husband, <coughs> he rubbed his throat and began to look distressed. I wondered if he couldn't swallow it. I fetched some tea from my water bottle and handed it to him. He took a mouthful of it. <laughs> he forcefully spat it out. Peter, what is this? It's tea. You're lying. Is it poison or something? How rude to think that. It's just herbal tea. Good for your body. Herbal tea? <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> I looked down upon my husband, coughing due to the overwhelming bitterness in his naked form, and the queen sitting with a vacant expression on her face. I declared loudly, So, how was it? Did you like it? It was my finest hospitality. After recreating the iconic quote that gained fame during Japan's Olympic bit, I nonchalantly proceeded to eat a pizza topped with crickets right in front of the two. With that, the two of them said, <coughs> and holding their mouth. The truth is, I have no problem eating crickets. That's because my mother is from the countryside. And sometimes, along with vegetables sent by my grandmother and relatives, we would receive packed crickets. Those were left out for a few days to let the feces come out and then fried and eaten. I personally think they have a mild and easy to eat flavor, but it seems like many people have an aversion to them. Now, let's have another one instead of dessert after dinner. Come to think of it, John and Tria, aren't you supposed to be at work right now? Caught off guard by the sudden remark, the woman panicked and said, I'm sorry, don't tell anyone at the company. Then my husband rushed to correct her. That's not it. I'm not working. I just took the afternoon off. I smirked and laughed. Oh, really? Well, then, I'll call the company and check. I took out my smartphone and searched for my husband's workplace number. Wait, there's no need to check. Why not? Because... I had an appointment with a client for a sales pitch, but they canceled on me. Suddenly, I had no work, so I haven't informed the company yet. Give up already. You have a terrible attitude. I know everything. How many times have you cheated on me under the guise of business during work hours? At that moment, the woman got angry and shouted, This is awful. You're exposing everything to your wife. You lied about leaving her and marrying me, didn't you? I've had enough. I'm leaving. 
I stood up and tried to stop the woman, who was about to leave with her clothes in hand. And I said, Wait! Before you leave, please sign this declaration. It contained an acknowledgement of the affair with my husband and a commitment to engage in discussions regarding alimony and other matters in the future. I also asked her to provide her address and contact information, of course. Just so you know, I have gathered evidence of the affair. If you try to resort to violence against me and run away, I will go to the police with the video I am currently recording as evidence. The woman sighed and reluctantly signed the declaration, showing no signs of remorse, but realizing she couldn't escape the situation. Then, I also had my husband sign the same document, and I stopped recording the video. My sister and I returned to our parents' house. Afterward, I told my parents about my husband's affair and the decision to get a divorce. But they weren't very surprised. I had refrained from telling my parents anything to avoid causing them worry, but it seems they had a faint sense of it. It turns out, I had stopped bringing up my husband's topics in conversations. I deeply realized that I couldn't hide anything from my parents, and I felt a sense of guilt. I sought help from my family and found a lawyer specializing in divorce, and I was able to successfully divorce my husband. I obtained custody of the child, and my husband and his affair partner were required to pay me alimony. Furthermore, my husband has the obligation to provide monthly child support for a child. The images found on my husband's computer and the emails exchanged between them served as sufficient evidence of the affair. The video that my sister took of me that day when I went over the scene of the affair, I just saved it and put it in my collection. Upon looking back, I feel embarrassed because I realized that I had gone too far and acted recklessly. I was able to get him to sign the declaration, which was the original purpose of the project. Seeing the two pitiful faces was a bit refreshing, so I guess we can call the result a blessing in disguise. It has been six months since then. After divorcing my husband, I had been living with my daughter at my parents' house. Until my daughter turns one year old, I am focusing on child care. But gradually, I plan to enroll her in daycare and eventually return to work. While I lead a peaceful life, my ex-husband and his affair partner seems to be facing various difficulty. My husband and I got married while working at the same company. As there is still a colleague of mine at my husband's work, who has returned to work after maternity leave. I was informed by the colleague that my ex-husband, instead of going to a client's place as he claimed, was actually going on a date with his affair partner. The affair was discovered by the company, and he received the salary reduction as a disciplinary action. Word got out that the reason for the divorce was my ex-husband's infidelity and that the other woman was Tria, a junior colleague at work. Tria lost her standing at work and decided to resign from the company. As for my ex-husband, Now that we're finally divorced, let's be together. It seems that John proposed to Tria, but she firmly rejected him. When Tria saw John acting flustered in front of me, she apparently lost interest in him instantly. I thought bullying you, John, was my privilege alone. I heard that he was rejected for reasons I couldn't understand. My ex-husband, left all alone, turns to his parents for help. But even they practically disowned him upon learning about his actions. I've heard that they have no intention of providing any assistance. With child support payments to make, and unable to quit his job, he can't rely on financial support from his parents either. He lacks the energy to pursue a job change. 
I heard that he plans to rent a cheap place in an accident-prone building and move there soon, leasing a rental car. Back when we were searching for a place to live together before getting married, I made a joke. Accident-prone properties have low rent. Why not go check them out as a trail? When I said that, my ex-husband got semi-irritated. Huh? What are you saying? Absolutely not. He used to say that. But he has changed quite a bit. Or rather, it's more like choosing the lesser of two evils, isn't it? As for myself, the only things that have changed since then or that I have come to dislike the number three. Amidst the busy life of single-handedly raising a child, I managed to regain my pre-pregnancy figure. Although my ex-husband called me an old lady, I strive to become a beautiful middle-aged woman. At the very least, I focus on skincare, maintaining my style, and primarily devote myself to childcare. Being a first-time parent comes with many uncertainties, and there are days when things don't go well and I feel down. However, my daughter's growth is an irreplaceable reward and a source of motivation. Lately, she has become more expressive, and watching her crawl and try to stand, it is as if she is a wind-up doll, moving around with such cuteness that I can't resist. Now, I have plans to meet up with a local friend today. Although she doesn't have children of her own, she suspects her husband of infidelity and wants someone to talk to. If my experiences can be of any help, I'm willing to share and offer assistance. All those cheaters out there in the world, they should suffer the consequences and learn their lesson.